Thompson. All right, welcome back to the 2024 SEC Baseball Tournament Championship postgame press conference. Joined by the regular season champions, the top seed of Tennessee, which won its fifth SEC Tournament Championship. Volunteers are represented by head coach Tony Vitello, along with center fielder Hunter Ensley, catcher Cal Stark, winning pitcher Dylan Loy. In a moment, coach will make an opening statement, and then we'll take questions first for the players only, please. Uh, there's wireless microphones coming around. Please identify yourself, and also please identify the player so that we can, uh, since we have three of them, so we can move the, the uh, camera to them. Coach? Um, yeah, blessed to have Frank Anderson be a part of our staff. Um, you know, with pitching the way it worked out the way it did, um, multiple guys did some special things. And, and uh, being in that dugout is reminiscent for me of Camden Sewell. Um, a couple years ago, Enns was on the team too. We're playing Florida, and you don't really have a starter ready to go. Sewell had been out of the pen for us, and he was he was nothing short of spectacular. And Xander did it for us out of that dugout, and now Deloy today. Um, certainly, in the plan was to see how many outs he could get, but he far exceeded expectations. And then the last thing is just the tournament overall was outstanding in part because you know LSU is the hottest team in the country right now, and they didn't stop today. In my opinion, they played really good ball. And um, you know maybe just ran out of time because that thing was was obviously very hairy at the end. Front row center for the players, please. Ryan Schumbert, Rocky Top Insider. Cal, just from your perspective, how much has the depth of the pitching staff increased uh, not only this week but kind of over the last month or so? Uh, I mean, I think we've always had depth. We just got to be able to show it uh, this week. Um, like Coach V was saying, it was good for guys to get out there, um, show what they can do. Um, you know, and I think it just it just adds to their their confidence. Um, you know, th this is this was big time baseball on a big stage, so uh, I think I think it just adds to their confidence going forward. Front row left. Ben McKee, twenty four seven Sports. Dylan, what was working so well for you today, and, and your mindset uh, being thrown in, into the mix there after AJ, and then Cal, what'd you see from Dylan working with him behind the plate? Yeah, so basically, I just kind of went in trusting my guy behind the plate. And what was working so well was just the connection between me and him and him calming me down throughout the whole thing. On the right, fourth row. Can you real quick? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, I think, uh, you know, as a freshman coming into a ball game like that, I thought he would be a lot more, you know, amped up and stuff. Um, but he, you know, I, I could see him out there breathing, um, which, was, which was a good sign for me. Um, and he just competed his tail off. You know, I think he was throwing everything for strikes. Uh, made the adjustments when he needed to, um, and just and just you know let the, let the defense work, which is always a good side. Uh, John Sartori, WVLT, Dylan, you know Tennessee kid in your first SEC tournament to be able to bring a championship back to Rocky Top. Just what does it mean to you personally? I mean, wearing the orange means so much to me, and being able to bring back the trophy is one of my lifetime goals growing up. On the right side, third row. Eric Kane, BulkWest.com. Hunter, four for four day at the plate. I think it might have come off four different pitchers. Kind of what was working well for you at the plate? Yeah, I was just trying to slow everything down today. You know, uh, huge crowd, obviously a great opponent that we have the utmost respect for in LSU. So really for me, it was just get in the box, slow everything down, and uh, breathe as much as possible to relax. Fourth row, far right. Ryan Silvio of our report. Kyle, just take us through that back pick that you had to get out of that inning. And how early in that at bat did you know you're going to go to it? Yeah, no, it's something uh, me and Blake um, obviously enjoy doing. Um, so we kind of talked about it um, earlier on in the game, uh, like a certain opportunity, um, stuff like that. We're always looking for it. Um, so he just, he just put it on. Um, I got a good pitch to do it on. I made a good throw. Um, that, was, that really is, that's really it. Paige Dower, full disclosure, Dylan, building off that last question, you know, this being something that you've looked forward to your whole life, describe the feelings you felt when this childhood dream of yours came true. Yeah, so uh, I don't know which inning, I think it was my second one, I came off the mound, it was like the third inning, and I expressed probably too much emotion for it being that early in the game, and so I tried to channel that and uh, just calm down, but that's kind of what I was feeling. First row, right? Yeah, Mike Wilson, Knoxville News Sentinel. Uh, for Cal and Hunter, are there things you know about this team leaving Hoover that you didn't know for sure when you came down here? Yeah, I think one thing for sure is there's a lot of different guys who can get the job done. Uh, I think we, we showed that on the offensive side, um, defensively and especially on the mound. Um, 
I think, I mean, it was a big weekend for guys to step up, and there, there was for sure a few guys that absolutely did. I think there's also a lot of different ways that we can win a ball game, um, building off of that, like Hunt said. Um, there's a lot of guys that can, that can be, you know, put in and, and get the job done. Um, we're not relying on, you know, just a handful of guys, and I think top to bottom, all, you know, 40 of us can, can go in, and, and, you know, I feel like we're, we're confident that we're going to, you know, put, put our best foot forward and, and hopefully win a baseball game. On the right side, third row. Yeah, Cal, kind of on that same note, how, how does a week like this and you know, playing games back to back and, and kind of going all week kind of prepare you for what's to come next weekend and the weekend after that, hopefully? Uh, I mean, I guess extra baseball, extra at bats, you know, extra extra innings that our pitchers can throw, um, more work, um, you know, more reps, um, more ground balls, stuff like that. So I think I think just just stacking the reps and stacking the abs just kind of you know builds us going into next week. So I think I think that's the that's the positive side of it. Second row center. Did it uh, did it feel like a home game for you guys, or, or at times was it even as far as the crowd noise? Probably 50-50. Uh, you always know when you play LSU, they're going to bring a lot of purple and gold. But uh, I mean, the other half was orange and white, so it was a great show out. It was a lot of fun. All right, front row on the left. Hunter, you were on that team two years ago that won the regular season championship, the tournament, the number one overall seed, and kind of the, the storylines are aligning once again. What, what do you want to take away maybe from that first experience and, and apply to this one to, to maybe make sure that things go a different way than, than it did two years ago? Yeah, I mean, I think for right now, all we can do is just keep playing our best baseball, uh, regardless of the results um, of the 22 year. I mean, just because we win this tournament has no correlation between, you know, a regional, super regional. Um, but yeah, for us, the guys in the locker room, you know, just focusing on the next day, uh, really the next task mentality and, you know, going game by game. Third row on the right. Hunter, this is for you. You mentioned earlier just about a number of guys stepping up, one of them being Billy Amick. He had a tough start to the tournament, but then came up clutch in that three-run home run. What's that payoff like for a hitter to finally get that hit and then the confidence it can build going into postseason? Yeah, that guy's a stud, first of all. Um, I mean, maybe the results weren't there all weekend, but I think you can go back from every single game and, and pick out a couple positives that guy had at the plate, whether it was, you know, moving a runner, you know, hitting a ball hard just right at somebody. But, I mean, getting the result uh, for sure helps the confidence. And in a game like that, it can really get you going. All right, gentlemen, congratulations on the championship. Thank you for your time today and all this week. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, boys. Good luck. See you at home, dog. Enjoy that. Yeah, it must be nice. All right, if there are questions for Coach, we're going to start in the back toward the right. Uh, Coach, Kirby Canal came in late and had some good relief there. He's been in this program for a while. What are your thoughts on him and what he's done for the program and today? He got the biggest cheer out of anybody in the entire park the whole weekend, uh, out of all fans included, which there were some big ones. Um, and I think it shows you uh, how much enjoy people enjoy just the way he operates his business around the park. If you're at one of our home games, you see it how he is in the community, and then how he is when he competes. And if you look at what he did, I know Blake Burke won the MVP of the tournament. You got to give it to somebody. And I know he had a couple big hits, but I think more than anything, he was our best, one of our best leaders. Um, but Kirby pitched four, t four, four times this tournament and was massive for us. And, you know, it, it's always difficult knowing you got to come in here and answer questions as a coach, especially when you have huge fan bases. Um, because even when the game's over, I'm kind of thinking about four or five things I just I wish I would have done different. I'm building up to the point you could argue we could have just left him out there. And um, I think he would have had what it took to finish the game. Front row on the left. Two things for you. With AJ, the TV broadcast showed uh, Woody looking at his arm after he came out of the game. Just what did he feel like after his outing? And then, and then why do you think Dylan Loy was able to thrive within that moment? Yeah, um, I don't. I don't know what the broadcast showed, but I think uh, Woody and him were going to sync up. You know, regardless, how do you feel and, and where you at with everything? I think he was wanting to press the issue and and throw a certain amount of pitches or go probably go until maybe he's in a jam. Um, we kind of knew all along we wanted him to start the game, give us a little bit of a calmness um, because we know how he competes and he'll throw strikes, and he did that. And uh, obviously. You know, he gives up the home run, but a lot of people have done that to Mr. Jones. 
And um, it was kind of cost of doing business, throwing strikes right there. And then Deloy, um, you know, he was he was down there. And I, I, I don't know if he feels this way, but if I'm him, I'm itching to get in that game last night. And there were a couple moments where it was like, okay, next hitter, you're in. And he never came in the game. So uh, I'm sure not only did he get his work in, but that, that anticipation of getting out there was probably great. But overall, he reminded me of Stom out there. Both, I, I said it to ESPN, too, copy the answer, that both those guys pitch with a lot of fire, um, but you gotta, you got to control it. And it was this fun balance. Same thing, Combs, at times last year, he would get so fired up, like he did after he recorded the first out out there, that he'd forget that there's something else to do after that. But he's about as wild as you know his walkout song. But he, he seems to have evolved a little bit where he can kind of you know, manage those emotions and that passion. All right, on the right side, fourth row. Tony, you came into the weekend knowing you'd be hosting a regional. Now that the tournament's over, what can be said about the run that you guys went on this weekend and the fashion in which you did it, fighting all the way through the loser's bracket that you can uh, take into tournament play? Well, I think that we, we balanced out, uh, other than Kirby, who probably wants to be out there every day, uh, we balanced the workload pretty well. Even behind the plate with Cal would be the other spot. The other guys just need to play. I mean, you're not going to feel good this time of year. You, you know, that's not going to happen. And kudos to Beth, our nutritionist. She was a, a maniac all week long with the food and the hydration and, and everything else. And, of course, Q helps her out, our, our strength coach. But, um, you know, it, it helped us to, to experience a lot of the different things that we did. And we did, we did some foolish things, um, you know, and we pointed those out. And we also accomplished a lot. If, if, you, if you need to know where we stand, you look at what we were able to survive. First of all, Vanderbilt beat our brains in, but we beat Texas A&M. No one's going to enjoy going there at all. Mississippi State is worthy of a host. Uh, we've all seen Starkville. No one's going to enjoy going there. And this is the hottest team in the country that we were able to beat today. Um, so I, I think kind of what we were able to, to overcome in this tournament, which you have to do every year to, to win it, Tells you a lot about yourself. Should build some confidence. Front row, center. What's led to the growth of the pitching staff in the last six weeks or so? Just Frank. I mean, it's. Uh, I say it. I'm not. I don't owe him anything. I mean, he's. Now that we've been through a lot of this phone call and this text message and under the radar and working with administration, um, this is where he's going to finish his career. If I can speak for him. Um, so I don't have any reason to say it other than I'm being honest with you when I say it. And if you want, look at what he did for Augie. Uh, look at what he did for a legendary coach at Texas Tech, what he did for Houston baseball when he was there. Um, so just blessed to have him. Now, Coach E's pretty dang good with those catchers, and it takes two to tango. Our peeps caught tremendously well receiving-wise and just Cal controlling the game the way he does. So there's a lot that goes into it. but. It kind of starts with Coach Anderson. And you know your players got to meet you in the middle. And I've, I've used the word, and I want to use it again, willing the willingness out of the pitching staff um, to take the ball. And there's no complaints out of Xander that he got hot or Dylan that he got hot and didn't get in the game. or you know, And you, you had Snead and Stom wanted to go in the game today, and that was not going to happen. Um, so it, it's a good approach out of this group, which has made it enjoyable, like we said the other night, to come to work. Front row on the right. Yeah, Tony, what was your perception of the, the pitching staff's depth going into this week? And do you feel differently about that, leaving here with what you got from Benke, Phillips, and, and Dylan Loy? Yeah, and, and one theme, I don't think it mattered, but but I kept saying, especially with this group that we're facing today and the crowd gets excited, we, we don't need zeros. Don't put that pressure on yourself. We just need you to go out there and throw strikes, and it's a staple of Coach A's staff. So if you're talking about throwing strikes and guys that are capable – uh, of going, we had no questions about our depth. But what version are you going to get out of each guy? Um, you know, Dylan's been very consistent. He's kind of been our Xander this year. Um, but it is his first postseason effort, so you, you wonder a little bit what's it like. Are we going to get the Marcus Phillips where <laughs> we got to calm him down um, with his attitude or, or kind of like, hey, dude, you're, you're, none, none of our guys want to hit off you. Why should anybody? And we saw the version we got. We probably kind of need to meet in the middle a little bit there. And then, you know, Banky probably, we did not want to use him again because of how he threw the other night. I mean, he left it all out there. And that's the best version of him. Um, so again, it was just a matter of just stay true to yourself because it is a pretty good group and a pretty deep group when they do. On the uh, left side, second row. Save for last year here, 
you guys have made a habit of making deep runs here in Hoover. Is there something you can point to that you think is a commonality there that allows your program to do that? No, I mean, um, Tuesday's tough, and we draw that last year. And, and um, you know, I think it was Wanzing was just incredible against us after we chased him really early. Um, so you're going to run into that guy, and he's going to get you or you're going to get him. It just kind of works out that way. Um, and, and, you know, as far as, you know, the main part of your question, having success, I don't really have an answer for it other than there's been good leadership on our teams. Um, Fergie and Liam were so fun to be around in the middle of the, you know, middle of the diamond as our middle infield in, in 21. And then we come back the next year and all the guys that worked so hard and cheered hard for those guys that got us in a final where Arkansas beat us were um, now getting to play. And they relished in that opportunity. And they kind of, you know, educated more than we did. That's when the first time came in the program was 2022, where the players started to become as much of the teachers as, as the coaches are. So there's been a nice little lineage and, you know, blessed to be around good leadership. Fourth row in the center. Going back to the willingness of the pitching staff, is that something maybe that has to do just with the personalities of who you have? Did you notice it early on? Or is there a moment maybe where that culture was kind of built? Yeah, I, I think um, like anything, there's probably no one magic answer. I think part of it is the makeup or the personality of the kids. And then you got to trust, you know, there's, there's a lot of different philosophies. Um, but if you're wearing purple and gold, then you got to trust what those guys are saying. If you're wearing orange, then you got to trust what we, we have to say. And, and it makes everything better when you do. So I think nature of the personalities and then recognizing they have a lot of people that are fairly skilled, if at the very least, at coaching them but also really care about them too. So um, there, there's been good communication, good going back and forth, and there's been a hunger to improve and get better. And maybe one of the special ingredients is there in there is there's a lot up for grabs this year coming into the year. I mean, you name it. And we went into the opening weekend, I think, with um, some people you know, excited about our team, but Drew Beam was the only, if you were gonna reference the past, he was kind of the one for sure constant that we knew we wanted to do and Kirby out of the pen. But there was a lot up for grabs. I think it's good for, for players to have that hunger and something to work for. All right, last one, Ben. Tony, it looks like you all are going to be the number one seed tomorrow. And uh, there's obviously the jokes about the curse of the you number want, one you seed. You on that committee? <laughs> no, but uh, the people who are smarter than me say that you are going to be the number one seed. Uh, tomorrow. Well, I guess what are your, your thoughts on the quirky conversations about the supposed curse, but also why it's so difficult for uh, teams to win in the NCAA tournament? Yeah, I think it's difficult for any team to win the NCAA tournament. And it's also very difficult to win this tournament um, because of the caliber of athlete that you're, you're um, surrounded by. And we were able to do that. And then to me, and I'm not trying to pat ourselves on the back, but one of the thing I always thought as a little kid, as a big sports fan, like, Big Ten basketball, I don't think they had a tournament um, back then, but it was more impressive for Indiana or Michigan to win the regular season because it's a huge body of work. Um, we were able to do that in the most, one of the most competitive amateur leagues, you know, of any sport. And so we did that, but it's over with. And we were able to do this and it's over with. So they should give you confidence. No one can take it away from you, but it's time to move on to the next thing. And uh, there's no point in talking about a super regional for us or any of the other, you know, top eight seeds because it's all about next weekend. And so we'll, we'll get back. Um, like I said, we got Q and Beth, so our players will, you know, that won't be an excuse. Um, but we'll be playing good teams that are capable of beating us. So we'll have to just go out there and win on Friday, whoever the committee wants us to play. And then we'll see what's going on on Saturday afternoon. If anything, at least you know it'll be rowdy in Lindsey Nelson Stadium. Congratulations, Coach, and thank you for all your time this week. Thank you. Appreciate it.